We're more than halfway through November once again, and whenever I'm scrolling on social media, there's always at least one meme about No Not November. Most of the time, I see a short video, GIF, or something that's related to the reject weakness, embrace masculinity memes. In this day and age, we often hear of internet challenges that are downright absurd and disastrous, like eating Tide Pods or stealing random objects. But are there challenges that possess some merit? Advocates for No Nut November are typically part of the broader NoFap community, people who encourage others to refrain from masturbation, ejaculation, and pornography use. The purported benefits are increased confidence, focus, energy, and self-control, among numerous others. Fundamentally, the goal is to exercise greater self-control over one's desires, which, as we all know, is easier said than done. Regardless of how you perceive this challenge, we can all benefit from exercising more self-control in our everyday lives. Today's discussion will examine the philosophical aspects of No Nut November and how it influences one's mentality. As such, I won't explore any of the alleged physiological benefits, but I will examine how this challenge can impact our perception of self and others. Regardless of physiological implications, the merits of this challenge primarily revolve around self-improvement. Self-improvement in the sense that an individual should exercise increased self-control over their desires and that they should invest their energy into more constructive efforts. Note that this isn't meant to demonize pleasure, but rather to assert that it can become a destructive idol which consumes every aspect of one's life. To begin, what are some reasons why someone would desire to tackle this challenge? Well, the central reason would be to reassert control over your mind. Robin S. Sharma once remarked that, quote, the mind makes a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. End quote. Essentially, our minds can perform exceptionally well when functioning on autopilot. We can perform repetitive tasks with ease. We can fall into our routines and habits with remarkable ease. However, when you attempt to master yourself and change your habits, you often find that there's tremendous resistance. Addiction is an obvious indicator of this phenomenon, and when the mind is enslaved by something, whether it's a drug, an idea, or some other obsession, then it's immensely difficult to overcome. For those who undertake No Nut November, and for whatever reason, the true implicit rationale is to exercise greater self-control over the mind. It's also frequently the case that their mind has been hijacked by masturbation, pornography, and sex, and they wish to retake the reins, reorient themselves so they aren't trapped in an endless tunnel vision. As I read through some background literature on this subject, I was rather surprised at how dismissive some commentators were on the possibility of pornography addiction. This is also as they simultaneously acknowledge that one can be compulsively addicted to gambling and video games. The symptoms and behaviors of a gambling, video game, or pornography addiction are comparable almost to the letter. Yet, there is an ostensibly robust reluctance to classify pornography in the same category. One could assert that perhaps it's because the scientific findings are weak on the subject and there isn't a strong correlation. However, it could also be due to perpetuating a certain narrative out of special interest. The pornography industry is an industry, after all, a multi-billion dollar one, and like any gigantic enterprise, it'll do what it can to protect itself. This is something that deserves consideration and should cause us to be immensely skeptical when viewing findings. Evidently, it isn't a stretch to believe that someone can become addicted to pornography. Indeed, we read and hear about these stories from our friends, people online, and we ourselves have likely experienced it to some extent. Predominantly a male issue, but pornography use affects women as well. If it detrimentally impacts your life where all you can think about is watching and getting off to porn, then it should rightly be denoted as an addiction. Digressing, other reasons for engaging in abstinence from these activities pertains to confidence, self-esteem, perception of self, others, and interpersonal relationships. In terms of confidence and self-esteem, a component that influences both is guilt. When you cannot control your urges and fall into the same negative habits, you tend to feel extremely guilty. As a result, you aren't as confident when you're feeling guilty and this in turn impacts other life dimensions. You perceive yourself in a negative light and you'll likely withdraw from or lose interest in certain activities. Interpersonal relationships become a casualty due to the fact that you tend to spend less time with loved ones when you're consumed by this. On the flip side, when you abstain from porn, masturbation, and giving into temptation, then there's a robust tendency to feel confident. 
You feel powerful because you aren't being influenced by your base urges and a domino effect emerges. Since you feel more confident, you perceive yourself in a positive light, which further influences your charisma and desire to venture into the world. Refraining from isolating yourself then goes on to help facilitate better interpersonal relationships, strengthen your current relationships, and forge new ones. Certainly beneficial when we reflect on it, but I will highlight a personal story of my own to drive the point home. I have dealt with pornography use for years now, and it's a habit I wish to break. In the early days, it was something I'd watch almost every day, but as I have grown older, I've been able to abstain from it for weeks rather than days. Nevertheless, I still wrestle with this demon and I hope that I'll eventually be free from it for good. I suppose the reasons why I have relied on this inappropriate crutch involve stress and pain relief. Immensely stressful periods, especially, and it doesn't help when you add chronic pain to the mix. Either way, I evidently realize that both of these reasons are excuses because there are healthier, more constructive ways to deal with stress and pain. When I really think about things, I cannot help but realize how pathetic it is to watch pornography and get off to it. Not to mention that it violates some of the ethical principles that I claim to uphold. Deep down, I know that I'm better than this and that if I claim to be strong, then I cannot continue with this habit, not only for myself, but for those that I care about as well. Keeping these thoughts in the forefront of my mind has enabled me to presently continue on my current streak of 20 plus days, along with how confident and strong I'm feeling due to resisting temptation. Finding other activities to engage in has significantly aided in this process, like consistently working out, going for walks, spending time with family and friends, in addition to avoiding media that fuels the urges. Asserting more self-control has certainly benefited me, and I plan on continuing this path so I can be free of this negative habit once and for all. To conclude, No Nut November, although a source for plenty of internet memes and compilations, does have some merit. Even if you don't take it seriously, this challenge can serve as an evaluation of where you are in terms of self-control. If you aren't very good with controlling your desires, don't be discouraged, because even the best of us understand that asserting self-control and breaking an addiction is certainly easier said than done. However, before it can be accomplished, you must decide for yourself whether you're willing to take the very first step. This challenge, like others, can serve as the effective stepping stone for enduring improvement. If you wish to make a change, then you have to start somewhere. That somewhere could be during this week, month, or year. Either way, the sooner you act, the better, because you aren't certain of how much time is left. Although you can certainly heed my advice, I ultimately recommend that you do your own research. Come to your own conclusions about this matter and then go from there. If you decide to embark on this journey, remember to take it one step at a time. Continue to make small progressions until exercising self-control becomes an ingrained habit. They say every journey begins with a single step, but the real question is whether we're willing to take that initial step. That's something you must evidently decide for yourself.